All right, so let's go over your syllabus. So this is sophomore English. I am your instructor, your teacher, uh, German Edgar Cortez Hernandez. So yes, my middle name is Edgar. Uh, please do not call me by my middle name. It is Mr. Cortez for you all. Um, my email address is down below, german.cortez at salinasunionhighschooldistrict.org. And my office hours are between 1.40 to 3 o'clock p.m. Uh, so there are going to be instances where you need to contact me. Uh, so please make sure to, one, either let me know in class or two, write me an email, uh, letting me know that you'd like me to block off a chunk of time during that particular uh, time of the day. So in order to actually access my office hours or my office, my digital office, you need to go ahead and click on this link. It is a working link, a hyperlink. All you have to do is click there and it'll take you directly to our meeting where we can go ahead and talk about your grade or any of your concerns that you may have. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's go ahead and move on. Okay, so I want you to go ahead and read the description for the class. And for those of you in my GATE or Honors or what it's now known as the English 10 plus class, uh, please go ahead and do the same. All right, so as you can see, uh, both of these classes are very similar and they have the exact same goal, which is to prepare you for a university education for the college route, right? So both of these classes use the exact same textbook. Um, the expectations or uh, are a bit different. Uh, however, regardless of whether you are in the gate or in a mainstream class, uh, you are basically getting the exact same experience with the textbook. However, it is going to be different depending on uh, how accelerated we are, all right? So let's go ahead and move on. Um, so a little bit more about Springboard. So I am a big fan of this textbook. Um, the reason being is because it's from the exact same makers of the SAT, uh, the College Board, all right? So I really like that Springboard really aligns with um, the College Board. So let me go ahead and read to you all a little bit more about uh, this particular uh, text or program. So it reads, Welcome to Springboard English Language Arts, a college and career readiness program for all students. Beginning in middle school, Springboard helps students develop the knowledge and skills needed for advanced placement as well as for success in college and beyond without remediation. So once again, uh, regardless of what class you're in, this program, this particular text is preparing you with the skill set in order to you, in order for you to become uh, successful as well as preparing you for the AP test. Okay, so required materials. So we have some pretty standard uh, materials. So you definitely need to make sure that you have a hard copy of your Springboard textbook. So if you have not picked uh, a copy of this textbook on camp from campus, uh, please make sure to do so sometime this week or next week because we are going to be using it. Um, I definitely need you all to have pen and paper. So that's pretty you know, uh, simple. Uh, I know that we are in a digital platform. However, uh, you will see that I am still going to require you to uh, do a lot of hands-on uh, of writing, okay? So in addition, you definitely want to make sure that you have a fully charged Chromebook every single day, and you also need a smartphone, an iPhone, or any other electronic device that can give you access to the internet. Uh, so we are going to be using two devices simultaneously on a couple of days, so uh, you will know exactly what that looks like as the year progresses. Uh, you definitely wanna make sure that you have highlighters and some sticky notes because once again, you're going to see exactly 
what uh, the day is going to look like um, when we are uh, in into the content of the class. So let's go ahead and move on. Uh, grade. So your academic grade uh, is based on standard letter grades, and it's a weighted grade. Uh, and it's based on the following uh, five categories. So you have your core standards, which are 40% of your grade. So uh, that is going to be basically defined by the following standards-based assessments, time rights, writing to sources, brief analyses, uh, district assessments, essays, and process papers. So the biggest thing that's going to determine your grade is what's called the standards-based assessment. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of students are very fearful of the standards-based assessments because it could be a really small assignment uh, and is going to determine 40% of your grade. And some students, uh, because it's so small, they don't realize that uh, they need to go ahead and prove that they have mastered a, a very specific skill. And if you can't prove yourself, then obviously you are not going to get that maximum grade that you desire. So just keep that in mind. You have to try really hard. Uh, classwork or synchronous work is going to determine 25% uh, of your grade. So any work assigned during class is going to be considered um, uh, synchronous work. Uh, so synchronous work means that we are live and that I am guiding you through a lesson and I'm teaching you uh, in real time. Uh, so also group presentations or projects, there is going to be a couple of group projects that you definitely need to make sure that you are uh, uh, getting done. Okay, so homework. So homework is now translated to asynchronous work. So that's going to be worth 20% of your grade. So asynchronous work means that it's independent work. I'm going to assign it and you are expected to complete it. Uh, most of it is going to be in the form of your Monday independent work. Now, there are going to be instances throughout the week where I might assign it for homework. And if I do assign it for, um, or excuse me, there's going to be a couple of times where synchronous work is going to become asynchronous work. So uh, most in-class assignments become at-home assignments, right? So we do something in class, it's not done in class, so you have some time at home to finish it, okay? So you also have some independent reading. So you are going to be expected to read at least two novels in this class. Um, so you definitely need to make sure uh, that you do your reading on Mondays or throughout the week. Um, we're also going to be doing Zinc. Um, you are also going to have assigned readings, um, some passages, short stories, poetry. You're going to have to read them and come prepared to class to discuss those readings. Uh, you're also going to have a vocabulary log. So I'll let you know a little bit more about what that looks like. Uh, participation, excuse me. Participation is worth 10% of your grade. So things like quick writes, journal writes, group or class discussions, um, the student closure. Oh, the student closure. Okay, so you guys, I do something really special in my class and you're going to know exactly what that looks like. Um, so all of you at one point uh, or another uh, throughout the semester, throughout the quarter, uh, you are going to be responsible for doing a three, uh, excuse me, a student closure, okay? Uh, we also do a three, two, one review in class. I'm trying to work in Kahoot and attendance, all right? So you can't really participate if you're not present, right? So if you're not in class, you, you might miss out on a couple of points. Uh, Exams and quizzes are worth 5%. So most of the quizzes in this class are going to consist of uh, assigned reading or chapter quizzes, all right? So uh, AR quizzes are also part of that grade. And um, very rarely do we have content-specific quizzes. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to your citizenship grade. So I'm going to go ahead and make this very simple. Okay, outstanding means I really, really, really like you. That means that you are a fantastic student. I don't ever have to think about uh, remembering you to do something. You volunteer all the time. You have a really great work ethic. You bring a lot to the classroom. So you're going to get an O in my book. So unsatisfactory, all right? So you, 
that means that there's a couple of things that I don't like or that I dislike that you are doing, right? So uh, this is to let you know that you need to go ahead and remedy those behaviors, okay? Uh, satisfactory means that, you know what? You do exactly what is expected of you, uh, but you know what? you're not going to go above and beyond, right? So I totally respect that, if, especially if you're a really quiet person, right? Uh, you might not feel very compelled to uh, blurt out an answer, right? Or participate. So I totally get that. But it is definitely something that you need to work your way towards. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> Attendance. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and let you read this it's because it's very important. Okay, so let's go over the attendance policy. So this is information that the district would like me to make sure that you are uh, receiving. Um, so let's go ahead and read. It reads, during the distance learning hybrid period, all students are expected to be present during the synchronous class periods. If a student cannot attend a synchronous class period, the student will be marked absent. Students can clear an absence in the following ways. Number one, Complete the class assignments delivered by the teacher asynchronously prior to 24 hours. If the assignment was completed, the teacher can change the absence to distance learning late. Number two, parent guardian contacts the office to verify the student's absence. Number three, a student will be marked present late if they are tardy to the synchronous period. And number four, which is not really a uh, way to clear, but more of what happens when you are continuously uh, tardy. Uh, students that are habitually tardy will be referred to the administration for discipline. All right, so you guys, uh, just make sure that you're coming to class and that you're doing the work. Remember that this is a year's worth of work within a semester's time. So we are going to be doing a little bit more work than usual. It's going to be a little bit more accelerated and you can't fall behind. Um, the good thing is that you only have to focus on three classes, so uh, it's not asking for much, okay? Your job is to be a student and to be present on the days that we are asking you to. Uh, so let's go ahead and move on. Uh, coursework and classroom policies, okay? So now late work, okay? So I typically don't accept late work, but um, if, you, uh, if you do... Uh, end up being uh, tardy or late, um, just like the district policy says, you do have 24 hours to complete that work, okay? Uh, retakes and resubmits. So this is a really important. So let's say, for example, that you are very dissatisfied with the grade that you received for an essay, okay? Um, you can always improve your grade by doing what's called a resubmit or a uh, retake, okay? So what you need to do is you need to go ahead and make sure that you schedule a time for us to kind of talk and go over your um, essay, for example, and so that I can give you feedback so that you can improve your grade, all right? So now, after that, you can go ahead and modify, make those adjustments, resubmit it, and I will give you that better grade, okay? But keep in mind that that doesn't automatically mean that is going to be a better grade, all right? Uh, you definitely have to prove yourself that you are worthy of that improved grade okay plagiarism and cheating so you guys just put it to put it simply if it feels wrong most likely it is wrong therefore don't do it okay so we are going to have a plagiarism lesson uh later on um uh, in the week so we'll we'll go a little bit more in depth about plagiarism all right down below you are going to see a link attached to our department policy on plagiarism. So that is specifically for your parents and for you to read. Uh, so go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, <clears throat> norms, rules, and expectations. Okay, so classroom norms. I have three, okay, three, okay. Um, and these are things that you need to make sure that you are constantly doing, all right? And thing is, they, they're, they're, 
second nature, right? You don't have to think about it. These are just things that you do. So rule number one, or excuse me, norm number one, always be polite. Speak with respect and show courtesy to all your classmates, including your teacher. So you guys, my last name is Cortes. In Spanish, that means courteous, all right? I was raised to be very polite. Being polite goes a long way in my book, all right? So things like impolite language, impolite gestures, topics, those are not welcome in this environment. Um, so you need to make sure that you check yourself when you are interacting uh, in school always, of course, but especially uh, in my class, all right? Because I do not tolerate that kind of behavior, impolite behavior. Uh, always be kind. Keep in mind that everyone is different and has different things going on in their lives. You guys, we don't know exactly where someone is in their life. They could be going through something really terrible and they don't need someone to come and uh, bombard them with even more uh, difficulty in their life. So please make sure that you are uh, being kind to those around you. All right. Um, always be patient. You guys, this is a virtual learning, right? Remote learning. Uh, things are not always going to go as planned. Uh, I'm actually really good at anticipating any issues and I resolve them before they can actually happen. Um, but if things go wrong, you, you guys uh, just be patient with me. Um, okay. So classroom rules. So you guys, these are actual rules that are going to govern how we uh, conduct ourselves uh, while in uh, this virtual space. So eating. So typically in a regular classroom, there's no eating. That is not the case here. You are at home. You're not going to uh, create any mess in my classroom. So therefore that's not the concern. The only concern that I have with eating is whether it is going to be disruptive. All right. So if you, let's say for example, wake up late and you're eating your cereal, all right, during a lesson, that is okay. Just make sure that you, uh, turn off your camera and that you mute yourself. So that way it's not creating a distraction. However, don't abuse of this privilege. It is a privilege, right? Do not take more than uh, than than a couple of minutes to finish your breakfast, all right? So I, I expect you to be on um, and I, I expect you to, to, to show your face, all right? So um, the same thing goes for the restroom, all right? So safe, honorable, sensible, okay? So if, you need to use the restroom. You have, uh, you have the right to use the restroom whenever you want. You are at home. The restroom is right there. All right. So uh, I don't mind at all. However, you need to make sure that you choose an appropriate time to use the restroom. If I am talking, giving a lecture, giving a series of directions, it's really important. You need to pay attention. So that's not the best time to use the restroom. Okay. You need to make sure that you use the restroom perhaps when uh, I'm giving you time to work independently or quietly, all right? Maybe I'm giving you 10 minutes to finish an assignment, okay? That would be an appropriate time to use the restroom, uh, okay? Um, so also, uh, if you do need to use the restroom, there's going to be a little chat box. Just let me know, uh, hey, Cortez, uh, I have to use the restroom. I'll be back. And then message me back when you actually are back, okay, uh, into uh, the classroom. Uh, Make sure to also minimize any disruptions or distractions during the class uh, period. Uh, you guys, I know that some of you are probably going to be silly um, and you're going to try to make each other laugh. It's okay to have fun. Uh, however, you guys, you definitely need to be mindful about uh, not taking up class time or uh, negatively uh, imp impl excuse me, implicating uh, your classmates' time to learn. Okay, so expectations. So you guys show integrity, honesty, and moral soundness. Okay, so you guys, honesty goes a long way in my book, all right? So if I catch you doing something inappropriate or if I catch you cheating, just, you know, admit it. Just say, hey, Cortez, I'm so sorry. I just fell under the pressure because da 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 da. all right? If you're honest with me, you know, it's probably going to lessen the consequence. I might just have a little pep talk with you. I might not even give you a referral or I might not even send you to the office, all right? Communicate. I, I really am uh, fond of students who can speak for themselves and convey their thoughts, all right? Um, also, be an active listener and an active participant during class time. You guys, 
it's really difficult teaching online and trying to engage you all, right? So you guys, that's already difficult in a regular classroom, right? So you guys, you need to be actively engaged in the computer and uh, using any of the tech that I'm uh, uh, using for that day, all right? Because it makes the learning experience so much more pleasant if I actually have people uh, who are interacting, right? Um, on the screen, all right? I just don't want you guys to stare at my face. Um, I mean, yeah. Okay, so uh, yes, be prepared to learn, have all your materials ready to go. So you guys make sure to bring your materials to uh, your working space, all right? Do not leave your backpack, your book in your room, all right? Uh, because it's going to create uh, maybe a distraction, all right? You're gonna miss out on some instructional minutes that might be really important to your learning. Um, so. Just have your things ready to go, okay? Uh, and last two things. You guys, show your face. I wanna see who my students are. I wanna see uh, you interact. I wanna see you talking. Um, it's okay, I know that it can feel really uncomfortable, but the more that you do it, the more comfortable it's going to get. Um, so I can tell you for a fact that I felt really odd being in meetings and interacting, but you know what? It's actually a lot of fun. Um, so I kind of like teaching online now because of it. And it's making me into such a better teacher because of it too. Um, also, uh, please be mindful of muting and unmuting yourself uh, during class uh, time. I will tell you specifically, hey, everyone uh, mute yourselves or unmute yourself, right? Um, so you guys just make sure that you have an ear out for that, for those words, those keywords. Okay. <clears throat> so consequences for disruptive and impolite behavior. So if there is behavior that I dislike, this is how I'm going to address it. Okay. So the first time that you are creating a distraction or you're being impolite during class time, I'm just going to give you a verbal warning. Okay. So that means that I'm just going to say, Hey, Jack, can you please, uh, mute yourself, you're distracting the class. Okay, that should be enough, right? But now, Jack, what if he doesn't want to listen or heed word, right? So the second time I'm gonna say it again, I'm gonna say, Jack, can you please uh, mute yourself? Okay, now, if this student were to do it again a third time, this time I would just completely log that student off, all right? So uh, they would have to complete the work uh, sync or excuse me asynchronously all right and then i would call parent and i will let them know what happened what occurred and then it's up to your parent to resolve the issue now if it does become habitual or if, if it's a repeated offense then obviously i'm going to contact your parent and but i'm also going to contact the uh, admin or the office and you are going to receive a referral okay so if there is any extreme behavior in class um so if you are cursing out of nowhere, or if you are uh, doing something inappropriate on the screen, you are going to get automatically written up for that, all right? So you guys, uh, please make sure not to be that kind of student, all right? So you guys, I don't want any bad apples. Okay, all of you are good apples, all right? So let's have none of that, okay? So moving on, this is a letter to your parents, okay? so. This is for them to read, but I want to go ahead and leave you with this message. You guys, I really love teaching and I'm really excited to have you all on this endeavor, right? This journey on for virtual learning. Um, I'm really passionate about what I do. Um, I'm really involved in, 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 uh, with students. Um, and you know what? I think I have a really good reputation. So you guys, I hope that you enjoy your, your time with me. Um, like I said, it's not, it's not, virtual learning is not anywhere near uh, the intimacy and uh, that you get inside a regular classroom. But you know what? We're going to make do. All right. And I hope that all of you enjoy your time with me and that we get to learn and have fun. All right. So it was nice meeting you all. And I hope that you have a nice day.